Well, Lee Francis, welcome to the In Excess Access All Areas podcast. I look like I'm in the storeroom of Toys R Us. <laughs> you do. I'm you just do. in my office. <laughs> We're There's an um, alien giving Spider-Man a kiss. <laughs> Yeah, let's have a look around this room. Who's who? You yeah, got um, remember Alf? I do remember Alf. Yeah, well, I made I made him. I made him, and he's um, he's a lamp. I was there. He is. I made him. <laughs> <laughs> You're good at making things, though, aren't you? You make a lot. Well, of you know, stuff. In, in lockdown, I um, didn't have much to do, so I started making things. I made these trousers that I'm wearing. Oh, so I they're not these. the original ones. No, I made these. So they're from the X tour. Yeah. Well, replicas. Replicas. What was this? <laughs> I saw I heard you said you had some trousers, but they didn't fit, and you got your mum to do a little bit of a patch on the back. Yeah, no, I guess to any in excess fan, that's sacrilege to a tamper with them. <laughs> but I wanted to wear them. So <laughs> I've got them down here. I've got them down here. I'll oh, just here set these up. Here we go. <laughs> Make that so I can hear you again. Um, there you go. Oh, is so that I don't know if you recognize this shirt. This shirt was from the X Tor, yes. one on the X Tor, and on the cover of Face magazine, yes, and 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 other places. And these jeans were um from Max Q, that's right, video. And um, I knew what brand they were, and I was always looking for them, always looking for them. And then I got my hands on Michael Hutchins' actual trousers. And then I found the uh, uh, another pair. And because I'm fat, my mum saw the little triangle. There's a little triangle in the back there. But what she did is... Know. Isn't she clever? No, she put the, she put the label back in. Oh. <laughs> so what label so, yeah, is it? Stretch? Um... These were, yeah, it's a stretch, but they're made by Mozart, Mozart London. Mm. And um, I've worn these on Celebrity Juice. They Obviously, are Michael Hutchins wasn't that wide, but I am. So do you reckon they'd go with this then, kids? Oh, well, I've got one of those. <laughs> but not the one. <laughs> not these one, yeah. Yeah, I guess, I guess it's the label that gives it away. That's it. It was... Um... Morrissey, Morrissey and Edmondson. Oh, came Morrissey afterwards. I tell you what, this is quite rare. This is quite rare. Oh yes, it is. This tour jacket. Yes. Which um, I guess the TV show X Factor didn't exist back then, but it does say X Factor on it. So if you wear it, people think, "Oh, you're a fan of the X Factor." Yeah, I like the X Factor, but it's an excess. And yeah. um, as you can see, that's the same label. It is. And they they parted in the end, didn't they? They became Did they? two different labels, yes. Well, I was shocked they had that label in because I thought this was just a generic tar jacket when I bought it on eBay for not very much. Really? And um, when, I, when, it came, when it turned up um, and it had that label in, I went, oh, this is oh, a special jacket. This is special. But like an yeah. idiot, I washed it and it faded a little bit. Oops. So I just washed no. it. Don't wash them. And um, on the same hanger... These. So. Michael Hutchins, wine-stained leggings. Really? With wine stains. When did you wear the <laughs> leggings? I don't remember those. Well, I saw these. Uh, I saw him wearing these on a, an interview on Breakfast TV. Ah, uh -huh. what, in the UK? And, uh, yeah, so a, a man introduced me to a man who introduced me to a man. <laughs> and um, he said he had some things. And I bought I bought um, a special jacket, which I'll show you. Oh, I can't um, wait to see that. And um, and then a few months later, he said, I've got some other bits and bobs if you want them. And I went, put it all in a box. And so it was just random things. and uh, But I recognised it all because he, he showed me it first. Mm. And I went, oh, yeah, 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 seen that, seen that, seen that. Um, but, um, so have you got any of Michael's rings as well? No. No. But I, I do have. The jacket that Michael wore yeah. on the Wembley stage back in yeah. 1991. 
It looks uh, thicker than what I thought. Yeah, it's it quite, was. it's quite a heavy duty to it be is, running about on stage. It? Yeah, you yeah. got a bit hot in that. Yeah, and um, apparently he got a bit wound up at the belt that was um, flapping around. So on the back of that, it's got gaffer tape. It's just gaffer tape down oh, bless because him. the belt, because <laughs> the belt kept fl flapping, flapping out about. of the belt loops. <laughs> and um, but yeah, this oh. is like my prized possession. Funny enough, we speak. Well, I speak to the wardrobe girl who was that on there that day. So um, I'll oh, really? ask her if, uh, about the gaffer tape or another, yeah. another day. Yeah, when it turned up, um, it had gaffer. You could see it there, the gaffer, <laughs> which I've never taken off. Um, but yeah, someone told me oh, he didn't like the belt flapping around, so it just got all sticky. Um, didn't like the belt flapping around, so and again, it's down. the same label. Morrissey it is yeah it I've, is and again I've tried to get Morrissey on I think he's just been a busy man but one day we'll get him on the show as well because I reckon he'll have some interesting stories about measuring people oh these, yes. these I think th these were Tim's oh uh, yes they were Tim's yeah. on at the Wembley gig yes and, and what's um, those white bits at the top is that a bit of velcro or something they're belt loops oh, they're the belt hooks <laughs> yeah but the white stripes are leather. Oh, nice. You can see. You can't really see, can you? But they're leather. Which can is I strange, be in your it's... will? <laughs> 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 um, it's not a very nice fabric, if I was honest. It's kind of some sort of weird polyester that you might find on a really cheap Halloween costume. Yeah. And then leather. Very but, um, I, I mean, when I, I was, were you at that gig? No, the but Wembley you one. were. I was, yeah, I'm on, I'm, on, I'm on the DVD. You are on the DVD. <laughs> For a second. <laughs> Famous. So all my friends, were, I went, went, all my friends, um, we all went there. And um, one of them used to have a dot on his TV where he was. It's a little dot oh. drawn. What's that dot on your TV? <laughs> <laughs> Cute. And um, I'm not sure whose these used to belong to. Hmm. But again, a little, little triangle in the back. It, oh. <laughs> Well, it's nice that they get worn, isn't it? Well, I've, I've got um, I've got a t-shirt as well, which I've got in a frame, um, and it's a, a t-shirt that uh, Michael Hutchins wore on a date with um, Kylie. It's um, a Jean-Paul Gaultier t-shirt. That's never going to fit me, and I, I, I couldn't tamper with that. So that's in a frame. But these things, yeah, I wear them now and again. Can't I can't believe, believe I own them because on, on that day, I remember one of my friends um, getting drumsticks. And um, I was a bit jealous, as you can yes. imagine. <laughs> and, and then fast forward, I don't know how many years later, I go, yeah, I've got my clutching's jacket. Uh, oh, and I've got his um, Doc Martens. Oh, and I've got his black top as well. Have you really got the Doc Martens as well? Or yeah, I've got, them in a, I've got them in a glass box. Well, a plastic oh. box, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 All right, uh, let's go back. How on earth did you start your In Excess journey? First time I saw In Excess was on TV. It was on a television show called The Wide Awake Club, presented by Timmy Mallet. And it was a new sensation video. And it just instantly I thought, oh, I like them. Oh, they're good. And then I was on a school trip. Um, we, had, where, we were in um, Whitby. And um, there was a record shop. That it, record, remember record shops? I really remember record shops. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know when they used to have like a, a bargain box? Oh, yeah. It, it, it was either um, music that wasn't doing very well or new music. And in excess for in there, and I bought New Sensation for 50 pence, which oh, I've still got, obviously. Goodness. And um, I bought that, and I can remember telling all my mates, oh, have you heard of in excess? And one of, uh, one of my mates who was a proper muso, he, he knew in excess. And then suddenly everyone liked in excess. And then one of my mates not liking in excess because everyone liked in excess. I don't. Why did, did you like in excess? Because they were fashionable then, and I, and I didn't. I didn't understand it. And um, so yeah, I've listened to in excess since I was about eleven or twelve. Yeah. Wow. And and still put them on now, like it's a new album. Do you it know? Is. Yeah. It never does. You know, I, I just keep it? no. And um, I like introducing in excess to people that were not too familiar with in excess for some reason mostly because they're way younger than me and i work with a lot of young people my producer on virgin radio is 26 oh. so I'm, I'm often going can we play some in excess can we play some in excess <laughs> and um and, and i like to talk about in excess so back then in excess were like the biggest band in the world 
Um, and I'll go, do you know you too? And then they go, yeah, I think I've heard of you too. <laughs> <laughs> and I go, yeah, sort of on a par with you too, that sort of big. And um, I was talking to an NXS fan recently and they were just like saying like, the fandom is getting smaller. And I go, well, because it's getting older and older and it's and we're getting older and it's just like the core fans that are still here, I guess. Yeah. But, but, but I- to me, it, it's just like it was yesterday. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm the opposite because I feel that the in excess fandom is getting bigger and bigger. It's like an army. Yeah. Well, maybe it is in Australia. It is. It definitely yeah. is. Um. So in Australia, you can go to shops and you'll be in the supermarket and in excess will be playing. I don't know if wow. it's just me or whatever, but yeah, it's yeah. playing all the time. It's on the radios a lot more now. Yeah. Um, yeah. They've, they've, they've just... I don't know if it's it's a bit conflicting. I don't know if it's a TV series or if it's a um, a, a new movie, but with um, Tommy Lee Jones. Yeah. It. And uh, it starts off with New Sensation. And there's actually some fishermen singing New Sensation in the background, and that's coming out in the next couple of weeks. Right, right. So, uh, yeah, there's, there's you, a lot. You know your shirt? This one. Your silver shirt? Oh, the silver shirt, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know one. someone else who's got one of those. So there must be a few of them. Um, No, there's only two. All so, right. So um, the guy that um, that um, made the Kick album, um, yeah. Nick, um, Nick Egan, Nick Egan was part of the photo shoot for the X album tour brochure. And yeah. Michael wore this shirt and Michael um, then put this shirt back on the rack afterwards and then yeah. took the nice clean one away and wore that one um, right. like to parties and other things and whatever. So this is the one from the actual X um, tour thing that he did. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then your yeah. mate, I think his name's Tim, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, hello, Tim. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I think Tim's got that one, which Michael, yeah. it would have been more of actual Michael's, but Michael did wear this actual one on those. Yeah. Shoes. Yeah. So I wonder who's got the jeans, the um, Stars and Stripes jeans. Oh, I wonder. I reckon in it. You know, well, they probably still got that. I did hear they were in um, Hard Rock Cafe in Australia. That's what I heard. Oh, well, I, I mean, I've got a pair, obviously. <laughs> You've got a pair made, didn't you? <laughs> mum, mum, can you make me some jeans like this? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Your mum's great, isn't she? <laughs> yeah. I liked the um, the um, the one that he had with all the little pearly buttons. Do you remember that? Did you ever get that uh, made? Which one was that from? Billy. And, and he wore on Max Q. Oh, what the the waistcoat? Yeah, I've got those jeans. I thought, yeah. and I need the waistcoat, don't I? You yeah, do. you got to get. Yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah, it's um, it's like a pearly queen thing. Yeah, 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 I yeah. Look really cool. Yeah, I mean the styling for X was amazing. I think, and um, funny enough, you mentioned Tim. He um messaged me on Twitter, and he said, "I've noticed that Keith Lemon started to dress a little bit like Michael Hutchins. Are you in an XS fan?" I said, "Yeah." And um, but it's funny because um, Heather, who does the wardrobe for me, I, I gave her all. Well, I didn't give her them. I said, "Look at these," and it was all my in excess um, programs from gigs and stuff. I said, "I want to look like that, 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 and that." <laughs> and so uh, everything was geared towards the styling, similar to that. And, and then um, yeah, then I met Tim, and he hooked me up with a man. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen a photo of you with Tim. Where was that then? Was that when you came over to Australia or when you were in the UK? Um, he came over here. It was um, a screening um, in the Corinthia Hotel uh, of the In Excess movie, the TV movie. It was a screening of that, but I didn't know. And um, I went there. Um, so I just got hold of some things and um, from my friend Tim. And then he says, oh, I'm going to see the guys at the Corinthia Hotel. And I went, what, guys? I said, oh, in excess. I went, no, you're not. He said, I am. He said, do you want to come? I went, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and I didn't know Tim at all then. And um, so I went to the hotel and Tim Farris was there. Um, Chris was there as well. 
and um, we watched um, the TV movie. And then afterwards, um, Tim, which was just so strange because I was texting my Leeds friends who were all in excess fans when we were kids, just going, you won't believe what's happening to me. <laughs> and I, I mean, I've, I've, worked, I've been in TV for a long time and met a lot of people, but I suddenly became a 12-year-old boy. Yeah. And I was like texting me, mates, so went, you won't believe. It's like, it's like it just when you meet someone um, that you like since you were a kid and you meet them as an adult, just your springs come out of your head. Yeah. And... Um, Tim Paris came up to me and, and he said, uh, what did you think to the film and stuff? And I, I said what I thought of the film. Um, and he says, I've, I've just got into um, beatboxing. I went, all right, cool. He says, can you rap? I went, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then he said, get a camera over here. So they got a camera over. And then Tim Paris started beatboxing. And then I started rapping. No! Luckily, I have, a rap in my back, <laughs> I have a rap in my back pocket that's ready to go. <laughs> And then um, a few months later, I, I got it on a USB, and um, I've been too embarrassed to watch it. But um, it was it an amazing evening. Hey, can we watch it now? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, and uh, I was quite influenced by alcohol that evening as well. That's hilarious. I can't imagine. But yeah, well, it was, I can't imagine it was that crazy. crazy. And um, I had, I had. Um, I had uh, what did I have? I had the Swing album on me that someone bought me for my birthday that was signed, and then uh, uh, Tim Ferriss um, ruined my dreams and said that's not our signature. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but oh, but then he signed something else for me. So oh, good, good man, good. Yeah, man. he is. Let's yeah. say hello to yeah. Tim. Hello, Tim. Hello, Tim. Okay, so you're a man of many faces, and when you're not a man of many faces, you stick a mask on it, don't you? Yeah, yeah, I wear I wear masks. You yeah, wear for masks. a living. I'm not Batman. I'd like to be. I bet you would. <laughs> or Spider Man. I do have a Spider Man costume. I don't look like Spider Man though. I look like Spider Man's dad. <laughs> yeah. so do you make I'm all not... these masks, or do you? Um, in the beginning, when I first started Boss Selector, um, I just, what well, happened? I bought a mask in Blackpool and um, it was just half a mask. I cut the mouth out and um, I was on a bonding weekend away with work. I worked in the art department at the Paramount Channel and we went up to the Blackpool Tower and that felt like the right time to pull this mask out of my pocket and put it on my face. And then um, I, I said, I'm Michael Jackson and did all the Michael Jackson stuff and everybody laughed and I went, ooh. Ooh. And then I didn't do it again. And then that same mask I used as a, a weatherman when I worked on Nickelodeon. Yeah. And he used to be, it was, it was the same character that I played as Michael Jackson, but without the um, swearing, because it was on Nickelodeon. And um, I did it as a weatherman. <laughs> and then I can't remember what else happened. Um, I bought a, a, a Michael Jackson thriller jacket from a second hand shop for £60, which was a lot of money back then. I, I had no money. And I thought it's going to be surely it's it's going to be coming useful somehow. And then um, I called one of my mates up who was a director. I said I've got an idea. It's called Celebrity Day Off. And he went all right. And um, said I'm going to be Michael Jackson having a day off. And he went, what does he do on his day off? And he goes to buy hair gel, don't he? And <laughs> um, so he just filmed me um, going to the shop to buy hair gel as M Michael Jackson. And um, the next time I did it was the first time I ever did stand-up. My mate was asking me to do stand-up. He was doing hosting a night of different stand-ups. And um, I've never done stand-up, and I didn't want to. And he says, oh, you can talk for a little bit, can't you? I went, okay. He said, I said, how long do you want me to do? He says, can you just do five minutes? I went, oh, I don't know. And then I said, I know, I'll bring that Michael Jackson jacket with me. And I basically did both selector on stage, and it went really well. And I thought, oh, that's, I might do that then. And then by then, I was working at Talkback on a show, called Show Me the Funny, where viewers voted for their favourite sketch and had already been Avid Merian, the celebrity stalker. And um, they said, have you got any any other ideas? And I said, oh, I did stand-up last night. What did you do? I went, got it in my bag, I'll show you. So I put the Michael Jackson jacket on and a mask and I did Michael Jackson. And they went, let's do that. And I went, oh, okay. P because I didn't do their voice. Um, and I, it wasn't an impression of them. Um, I said, you have to be... I have to look like that. It has to be someone who dresses iconically um, because the face doesn't look like him. 
Yeah. Uh, the voice doesn't look like him, but if I've dressed like him and I say I'm Michael Jackson, people go, "All right, are you?" Yeah. And um, so then we did a few celebrity days off um, for this show, and then Channel Four said, um, "Oh, it's going down really well. If you come up with an idea for your own show, we'll do a pilot." And I couldn't believe it. Wow. And um, I gave them eventually. I gave, I think, in total, thirty six ideas that they kept saying no to. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. And then my wife's um, brother said, why don't you just do that thing with the masks? It's funny. I went, okay. And then, so I wrote that as an idea. They said, yes. And then they said, it needs a human in there, though, to front it because this the mask thing, I don't know if people's going to connect. So I went, well, I'll do it as Avid Merrion. Be, he can be the host of it all. We did a pilot. And um, then it felt like I waited, like, for months and months. It was a long time. Uh, and it was Robert Popper, a commissioner uh, the working at Channel 4, that said, oh, yeah, I think we should do it. He convinced Channel 4 to, um, to let us do it. And um, so we did it. And that was 20 years ago. Ooh. And wasn't that a long answer? <laughs> <laughs> 20 years ago. And really, your career has just keep, keeps going. You keep reinventing yourself a little bit, don't you? Well, there's, dip, there's dips now and again when I'm getting into trouble for things. There's little dips. Yeah, I, I, I've been not in the UK. I think I, I just missed you coming up. Um, as yeah. I think I think celebrity juice was really your yeah one, that, yeah uh, that's been the biggest thing I've done yeah, probably the biggest thing well Remember? that ran for fourteen years what uh, twenty six series so when we started that me Holly and Fern um, we were much younger nobody had kids some people weren't even married yeah um, so yeah uh, I felt quite close with Holly and Fern that, that, like they were my TV sisters yeah and um, I think. Um, Holly might have done 12 years and Fern did 10 years. And then it was Emily and Laura who took over. And uh, I'd known them for years as mates. So it was when I started Celebrity Juice, I didn't know Holly and Fern. We became mates. Um, and when Emily and Laura t took over, um, I was already friends with them. So I thought, oh, it's already going to work. Yeah. Uh, but it only lasted like three series with Emily and Laura. And I, and I just think it ran its course. I can remember getting the phone call saying oh we're not doing any more celebrity juice and I just went oh, okay I didn't even ask why yeah you <laughs> went, were ready. okay do you know what I was 50 I was I, I was turning 50 and I always said I, went, I can't do celebrity juice when I'm 50 I just I just didn't feel like I could do it when I was 50 and nearer to the end the guests were getting younger and um you know like who are you people I didn't know I didn't know <laughs> like, what's, no. that? what's what's the name again <laughs> what did they do <laughs> yeah, I, I can remember. Do you know Tom Grennan in Australia? Is he in Australia? No, probably should. Listen to Tom Grennan. He's okay. amazing. So he came on as a guest, Tom Grennan. And I just said to him, I went, I don't know who you are. I said, but if you're nice, I'll buy your album. <laughs> <laughs> and he was so, I mean, he's really fun. He was really fun. Really got on with him. And we played one of his tracks and I'd never heard it before. And I went, oh, you're good. And then I went home and bought his album and then bought everything. And um, I do I do a show called Shopping with Keith Lemon as well. I went shopping with him. And um, this year he did Glastonbury. And I, I felt like um, a proud dad. <laughs> Just like, I, went, I know him. I know him. I know him. <laughs> with this big. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um, have a listen to Tom Grennan because um, okay. he's really good. A really good singer. Excellent. Yeah. And now you're on radio and I've just been on your Instagram because you're quite good on your Instagram. You're very good on your socials. Oh, thanks, um, thanks. And you were with Graham Norton. Yes, yeah, so he's on the Saturday and Sunday morning. I come on um, on Saturday straight after Graham, so there's always a handover. And and I met Graham, funny enough, I met Graham back in the day um, when I'd done the pilot for Bo Selector and I didn't know what was happening and I got invited to this Channel 4 dinner and I was sat next to Graham Norton, which I, I was a little bit like, oh, Graham Norton. And he said, what do you do? And I said, oh, I've just done a pilot called Bo Selector. I don't think, no, it wasn't even called Bo Selector then. It was called Poppelganger. Um, but then another show came out called Poppelganger. And it was Robert Popper, the commissioner. He said, um, why don't we call it Bo Selector? I went, because that's the catchphrase of one of the characters. It doesn't make any sense. And I went, we might as well call it Charmon then. He went, we'll call it Charmon then. I went, that makes less sense than Bo Selector. So we call it Bo Selector. Bo Selector. But um, so um, Graham Norton, he, he said, uh, I said, I've done this pilot. I said, I don't know if it's going to happen. He said, if you're at this dinner, it's going to happen. And I'm like, 
And I went home and told my wife, Jill, I said, I went, Graham Norton said it's going to get, it's going to happen. <laughs> so, um, and then a few weeks after, I bumped into him in the street and I stopped That's and I went, doing. oh, hello. <laughs> yeah, I, I stopped and went, oh, hello. And he went, hello, and continued walking. I just stood in the street laughing, <laughs> which I've told him about a few times. But it, it is lovely that I've ended up a, a virgin um, coming on after Graham Norton. And he's so nice. He's so nice to me, you know. He's a lovely fellow. Aww. Yeah. So he hands over to me on Saturday on Saturday afternoons, and when I do I do uh, Virgin Radio as myself, and it's one of the first things I've done as myself because I've always been Keith Lemon, mm. and I was a bit nervous at first, and I I, di I didn't know my voice at all. E even doing this would have made me nervous. Now doing this as me. Yeah. Um. But I've I've done it for a few weeks now, so I feel pretty comfortable. Yeah. Not being key flamming and saying bang tie the old time. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> I didn't know what to expect. I was like, oh my God, I don't know if I know all these characters he's going to come yeah. out with. I'll tell you a funny story. When I was having Marion, um, who was from Transylvania, um, I didn't ever do any meetings, even work meetings, not in character. I was always in character. And um, with the first time I got paid, 20% of my earnings went to foreign national taxes. Because Channel Four thought I was foreign. <laughs> and I went, Why is twenty percent of my pig missing? <laughs> and then, and then my agent laughing, saying they've sent it to foreign national taxes because they think you're from Transylvania. Oh, hilarious! <laughs> they really thought. So you're really I'm missing from Leeds. Accent. It's a lousy accent. It's a lousy accent that I do. How do they believe it? So, how, yeah. of all your characters, who's your favourite? Like you feel sort of like you could never let go of. Do you know what? I still do the bear. Oh, hello and welcome to Showbiz Chat Up a Tree on Hampstead Heath with me, the bear. Yeah, um, I like doing the bear because the bear used to be a human called Barry Gibson and now he was a presenter on a TV show called Pop World. I'm here outside Channel 4 to see if I can go into T4 and promote my single. It's all PR. And um, they sacked me because they didn't think I was right for the demographic. But the director liked me and just said, just keep coming in until they won't let you in and we'll keep doing stuff. So I kept coming in to the point where, you don't work here, Lee. You don't work here. <laughs> And then, and then I went. By then, I just got, I got the green light for boss select. I went, oh, it don't matter because I got my own show. And then I went to Ben, the director. I went, Ben, are you coming? Are you coming with? <laughs> and he went, yeah. And he came and directed boss selector, and has gone on to direct the in betweeners and loads of other things. Oh, that's great. That's a good yeah, story. Yeah. That's a good story. Uh, I actually remember the bear and being a little bit <laughs> shocked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because he yeah. he shows you when he's happy. Yeah, he does show you when he's happy. And I was, I, I think it was like, you know, when you randomly put the TV on and just come out, I don't even know what time it was. And I thought it was a children's program because you were <laughs> reading a book to yeah. somebody and you're in this chair. And this is the bit, I just, that's the only bit I remember. And this it must have been back, I mean, I, I left UK in 2004, so it's going back a bit. Yeah. Then your little weenie came out. I would love it if you tickled my belly. Go on, then I'll treat. Please oh. invite me to your tree house. <laughs> Is it nice? Oh! Oh, no! You've made my tail pop out! Oh, no! Cut the camera! I've got his little weenie somewhere, on my desk somewhere. It's fallen at the... But it's just a broomstick handle painted pink. Oh. And it's, look at the trouble that, that that broomstick handle painted pink caused. <laughs> look at the trouble it caused. <laughs> yeah. But it doesn't come out anymore. He's no. too old. <laughs> <laughs> not, not, even, not even if he has a blue tablet. <laughs> Don't work. Oh, that's... And, and, the, and the methods of getting it out back in the day. So it used to be on a pedal. I, when I'm trapped inside a bed, it used to be on a pedal, that, uh, like a sewing machine thing, and that it came out then. Um, then it changed uh, to a remote control one. So oh, a guy was stood 10 feet away. just like, like I can remember he did it that. once. He pressed it. He pressed it um, too much, and the mechanism that the um, broomstick handle was attached to was a car aerial, and the car aerial just continued to come out. And um, I can remember the guests just looking like, "What's going on?" And this car aerial's coming out of the bear with a pink broomstick handle on the end of it. And and as the bear went, right, what's happened is my penis is broken. And we'll have to do it again. And can you pretend to be surprised? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fun times. 
my god I just, but the bear was what i was going to be doing at um comedy in the vines so we're going to be doing that on stage so why did you choose that is that because they've got a bit of a following over in melbourne for the bear i haven't a clue i just think visually it, it looks very different to every other i guess stand-up comedian that will be there with a microphone and then suddenly a man dressed as a bear comes on <laughs> why <I don't>... not <laughs> <laughs> And you do barely um, but, news is that is, do you still do that the barely news yeah now and again uh, well i do it i do it on virgin radio now <laughs> yeah yeah I, and it's funny because no one can see me but i'm dressed as the bear when i do it you, you actually dress up and you're on radio yeah. so that, oh, that's, yeah. that's brilliant this is the barely news with the bear at barely five o'clock normally at six o'clock i don't know how i'm doing it at five but we are the, 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 um, Polly, the, the producer she goes are you ready to bear up like, yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> you can see me now. Now and again, they post little videos. Wow! And you put full yeah, I have. In. Yeah, are these are these in here? Oh, yeah. and no, that's, that's where the them. Barry Gibb bit came from, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Well. Oh, jeez. Oh, these are an old pair that don't fit me. <laughs> I'll tell you, what I've got in here. I've got boxes of teeth, different teeth. Lost. These are Lost Boy fangs. Oh, I like the Lost Boy Fangs. Yeah. Oh, a cool album that is. Yeah. Featuring yeah, isn't it? as well. Yeah. 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 That that film I was just drawn to. Uh, everything, aesthetics about it and everything. And then, yeah, my favourite band's doing music for it as well. I know. I know. And I love Good Times. Oh, good Times, yeah. I mean, we're very lucky over here that we've got a lot of tribute bands. We must have about eight going on nine yeah yeah around the country yeah. play every um weekend somewhere in, yeah in every um state and um a lot of them um are teaming up with like jimmy barnes um tribute band and they do that um good time song and yeah they are brilliant at it really really good <laughs> I enjoyed though when Terence Strint Derby joined. Oh, I did because I was a, I was a big fan of Terence Strint Derby. Oh. Um, it was Terence Strint Derby was the second album I ever bought mm. a, according to the Hardline, and um, when he joined in excess, I thought, eh, "This is perfect. perfect. This is yeah. perfect." Because who can replace Michael Hutchins? Who? No one. And uh, and then um, you who would have thought Terence Strint Derby might be good. Terry Shit Darby was amazing. You nailed it. Although I hear different take, a different take. It was yeah, different. But, he's, but he's he's got that sex appeal and stage presence and voice. You know, yeah, that yeah. soulful voice. But yeah. I hear, I heard from people that were actually there at that concert that he didn't nail it. But yeah, I know they weren't impressed. Right. But when you actually saw it, I mean, uh, the videos, yeah. he, he, I thought he was brilliant. I thought it was yeah, amazing. He'd be a I thought great um, person to interview if he ever came out. It, is, it sounded different, but I liked it. Mm -hmm. um, he, but he's not called Tennis Strength Dab anymore, is he? No, Salamandi. Salamandi Matreya. Oh, say it again. Fernando Matreya. Well done. I think I should give you. He, well, he changed his name to he changed his name to the incredible E. G. O'Reilly. Yeah. And everyone's like, "Where's Terence Trent Darby gone?" <laughs> and then uh, he went back to Terence Trent Darby, and then he, now he's Fernando Matreya. And I did hear that he said Terence Trent Darby was a character, and he's not singing any of those songs anymore, which was a shame. And I thought, oh, I like Terence Trent Darby music. I but I did see a clip of him on TikTok singing um sign your name so he must be singing him again yeah i think it was something to do with the record label and now that that yeah, contract has probably gone he can probably yeah. sing songs again without thinking he's lining somebody's pockets that he doesn't yeah, really yeah. like maybe yeah 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 exactly no he was yeah. he was really good who would you like to see front in excess do you reckon it's too hard isn't it 
<laughs> many, many people. <laughs> it's too it can't hard. be just one, can it? That that's why I thought um Terrence Shrink Derby was good. I would never thought of Terrence Shrink Derby. And um just it was a slightly different sound, mm. um, which I liked because I was a Terrence Shrink Derby fan as well. And um how how can you replace Michael Hutchins? Don't ask me what you know is true. Don't have to tell you I love your precious heart. Where was you when Michael passed away? I think I was in Leeds back then. I'd been in Leeds. And um, I, t- I tell you what, I can't remember being too upset, which is weird. But I I've got softer as I've got older. I'd have been at a time, it'd have been at a time probably when I was more, um, I guess, more self-indulgent and concerned about what I was doing. And now that everything's gone all right for me and I know what I'm doing and I'm married and I've got kids and everything's lovely. If anyone passes that um, I'm a fan of, I get really upset. But mm-hmm. I, I, I don't, don't recall being upset, just sort of like, oh, what am I going to like now? I was a oh. bit like that. But I might have been upset. My wife might remember more than I do. Yeah. And um, and I then when... suddenly, suddenly I started missing in excess and just got heavily back. And luckily I still have my T-shirts that didn't fit me because <laughs> I was more dad-shaped. And um, but thanks to eBay, you can buy them again. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I just I had lovely memories. I still had all my programs and stuff. And uh, talking to my friends, and they go, "You still got your NXS t-shirts?" And I went, "Yeah." And this is my original one. It's not really. I bought it again because it didn't fit me. <laughs> <laughs> but luckily, actually, back then, I used to wear things looser, so mm. it did fit me. Uh, just a bit snug. That's right. Back in the nineties, yeah. it was all big t-shirts, wasn't it? Yeah, all yeah. Big t-shirts again. And I've bought. Well, I, I always buy too big now, and I just think, yeah. well, I'll, I'll have this forever. <laughs> you don't look that big. You keep saying you're big. You're not big. I'm fifty years old, shaped. Yeah, and now I'm a big kid again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so all this is yeah. underneath my bed, and my husband yeah. did not know a thing about it probably about six or seven wow. years ago. But now I'm like, I've got my ladies' cave full of RV yeah. stuff. Yeah. I mean, they, they the boys sent me this for Christmas last year. Oh, amazing. This was the last photograph um, that they had with Michael backstage wow. at the end more. And then yeah. I've got that, um, thanks for being B. <laughs> Um, I've got a friend that lives in Hong Kong, um, and he said he, he used to pass Michael Hutchins quite often. And um, his friend was a photographer, and um, he did a shoot with Michael Hutchins, and he gave me this big print, and it was like number one print number one um, of um, I think he was with Gary Beers and Kirk Pengeli as well in the picture. You've got yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Hey. Somewhere. <laughs> oh no, no, I know where it's on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> well, like you have a tour around your house. Didn't you do a show called Through the Keyhole or something? As as if you yeah, want to through your house. No, no. <laughs> only in here. I only ever film in here. Yeah. You gotta keep some things private. No, oh, absolutely. Don't worry. I'm not I'm not I'm not going yeah. there. I'm not going there. Did um, you ever meet Michael Hutchins? Um I ran after him. <laughs> So um, back in 1986, I saw them for the very first time in Birmingham. They were playing at the local Odeon and blew my mind. Yeah. I've just never seen a man be able to like sing and convert. And I was just like, I felt like the Beatles, you know, like, ah, I'm going to meet him, I'm going to meet him. So yeah, we ran down the back alley and they'd already got on the tour bus and the tour bus right. went past us. And then it stopped at the top, so I ran after it and I smashed my tour poster against the window. And uh, they looked oh. out, and I'm like, "Take me with you!" Yeah. <laughs> um, but the bus driver didn't hear, and they went. So, like, yeah. I've been following them ever since. But um, I, I did a Tim. podcast. Nice. Hey, you met Tim? Yeah, I met Tim, yeah. um, and I got a got a I got a a nice hug from him, and yeah. Yeah, and I've met. Oh, in fact, I've met them. I've met them all except Gary. I've met Andrew. Yeah. Been to yeah. Andrew's because Andrew's now playing country music. Yeah, with his big yeah. hats. With his big hat, and yeah. it, this this was nice actually. We went to see them at a place called Manly, which is on the northern beaches of Sydney, which is a beautiful place. And it was a small 
get together and we were really lucky that we were literally had a table right by the stage and next to us was the family table so Lane right. Beachley and Kirk and Tim's sister with the like they're all sitting there watching and it was like this is weird and then um, at the very end they all sang don't change and Kirk got up with a tambourine and started singing that was about oh, wow. three years ago it was oh it was right. very nice actually it was gorgeous you're saying um take take me with you um to the tour bus um I did a podcast with Natalie and Brulia and I... she went with them she went with them she told me she said I went I went on tour with an excess I went what were you singing she went no <laughs> just went with them. <laughs> What we're you doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, she just went with them. Look at And she show me photographs of her when she's in the audience. Yeah, I've seen I've seen those not so recently. And yeah. she was uh singing at a party, weren't she, for you? Some um yes, yeah, they do a thing at Virgin called Sunset Sessions, and she was um she was doing that and she spotted me in the audience. She shouted Lee. <laughs> <laughs> and then afterwards she said oh my god i just shouted you in the middle of the song i said we'll just leave it in it's funny i said i'll, I'll just mention it on radio <laughs> so as i always call it she was singing tom but i always call it the lee mix <laughs> tom the lee mix <laughs> lee! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's what she did that's what she did yeah. all right well i think we've talked about everything actually i think i've got my little list here so right. um your connection um, I was going to talk about how we met, but I'm not going to bother with that. Uh, <laughs> closed. T- I was going to mention Davina McCall. Yeah. Do you want to? Because that didn't she sort of help you at the beginning, Davina? Well, I, on Wikipedia for many years, I don't know if it still says it, but apparently she discovered me whilst I was doing the stand up circuit. But as I told you, um, I, I, can't, I think I've done stand up three times. I'm not a stand up comedian. So she didn't discover me that way. It's when I was working at the Paramount Channel. Um, so I got a job at the Paramount Channel as an ideas person. I storyboarded all my ideas. Then they said, can you draw? I said, well, I used to be a graphic designer. I said, do you want to work in the art department? I went, okay. I just couldn't believe I was working in TV. It was really exciting, so I didn't care where I was working. But whilst I was in the art department, um, I wrote a script and made a video at home every day for three years. And then um, I wrote, we used to have MTV on, and Davina was a presenter on MTV back then, and we all fancied her. And um, so I wrote a, a sketch with Davina McCall in it. And one day the boss said, uh, why do you write all these sketches? And I went, I thought this is what we're going to be doing. And then the, and then I went, if you can book Davina McCall, we'll let you do a sketch with Davina McCall. I went, oh, okay, then. We got Davina McCall. I got on, we did the sketch. I got on with her really well. And then she said to me, have you got an agent? I went, no. And um, she says, um, here's the number of mine. I said, oh, okay, thanks. She went, are you going to call him? I went, no. She went, do you want me to call him? I went, yeah. <laughs> then then she called her agent and introduced me to her agent, and then he became my agent for 12 years. So there's quite and, a uh, bit of, like, you, a bit of not so much luck, but you've been pushed. Oh, it is luck. You've been pushed and moulded into this, really, haven't you? It is luck. It's always, um, you know, you have to have, a, I guess, a bit of front front Confident. and uh be at, be, at, be at the right place at the right time mm. and a bit of luck happens i guess and um and talent come on <laughs> i can make alf <laughs> you can make up you can make more than alf <laughs> oh my god your um your costumes that you make for halloween are unreal i was i was a vecna this year is that where mum's sort of like genes have come through? I suppose I don't know. I, I, I just I say um, in um, lockdown I got became really crafty, <laughs> just <laughs> making things all the time. I made things when I was little all the time. Just used mm. to make things, mm. and I, yeah, I went to was Vecna, and the costume was made out of a plastic bag and some bubble wrap. It oh. doesn't look like that though. Um, but yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, I can remember beginning of Boss Selector. I was making costumes for that because we didn't have a costume person. I can remember being um, sat up three in the morning making Christine Aguilera's chaps, <laughs> sewing it by hand. And uh, yes, yeah, so I'm doing. I'm doing a tour in March. I'm going oh, on tour. I, I was going to say I did see that you're starting. Um, yeah. at, you you're calling it your first tour, but this would be under your real name. Yeah, well, it's, it is my first ever tour, so I'm calling it my first time. Mm. If I enjoy doing it and I do it again, it'll be called my second time. <laughs> if I do it again, it'll be called my third time. 
<laughs> and, and then when I don't like it anymore, I'll be called my last time. And uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's the first time I've been on gone on tour. And um, we're, we're at the Palladium in London, which is really exciting. Mm. Uh, but I finish in Leeds, three nights in Leeds. So that's going to be really fun because I'll have all my friends and family there. Yeah. A- an audience just made up of my friends and family, I guess. Oh, I think there might be a few more than that. And um, so I'm with Jess Robinson and um, Adam Booth. And Adam Booth has played a lot of stuff in my sketch show. He played Keith Lemon's brother. He plays Deck when we do Ant and Deck. He does. He does plays lots of characters in the in the sketch shows that I do, and Jess Robinson is an amazing impressionist and singer. She can do lots of voices. Uh, I met her whilst I was doing a movie quiz with Gabby Roslin on a Sunday, and um, Jess would do impressions. And I went up to her and I said, "You're amazing," and she's really nice to me back. And she said it'd be a dream job to do something like Boss Selector. And I said, "Oh, that's what I was com- coming to ask you if you'd be up for doing it." We did a pilot for a new version of it. And it um, it was called Avid Merian, Thank You, Please. It never happened. And I said, if it doesn't end up on TV, let's just do it as a tour. So that's what we're doing. We're doing that as a tour. Fantastic. Yeah. And how long is that tour going to go for? And are you going it's, nationwide, you say? Yeah, I think it's I think it's tw- 26 dates, maybe. I can't remember. Wow. I'm not, I don't want to give all the numbers of dates. I've got because I'll get all scared and go, oh, I'm never going to make it. Uh, just no. each do each show. Um, like it's the first one and really enjoy it, I think. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there's lots of characters, loads of new characters. Um, but Avid's going to be in it. Keith Lemon's in it. The Bear's in it. Urban Fox. I played Amanda Holden's gran for a while. She was called Myrtle. Myrtle's in it. And um, <laughs> lots of new masks. Fantastic. Well, I'm yeah. sure that everybody will, in England will be going to see that and get in their uh, tickets to go and see you. So yeah, I think uh, it's, well... it's sold... Um, it's just past the 80% market. So Ooh. there's a, a yeah, so well there's just a few left. There's just a few left. You've got a few fans out there. Then. A couple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my wife and the mates. <laughs> <laughs> Is your daughter old enough to go and see you yet? No, not really. I would say I, I she's seen films that I would not say are appropriate for her. Um <laughs> what well, she's like watch Deadpool and stuff like that. I don't know. I don't know if you should be watching Deadpool. <laughs> and um she's she's 14. And um it's a cartoon in it, Deadpool, with um strong language and yes. strong violence. Yes. But she's very sensible. And so I don't know. I don't think you should be interested in seeing me. She, she I did a show called The Keith and Paddy Picture Show with Paddy McGuinness. She watched that because she likes films and she laughed at that. She'd never seen Celebrity Juice. She, so she tells me. Yeah. Um, And she used to watch Through the Keel and like that as well. Oh, she did. Oh, there you go. Yeah, but not none of the naughty stuff. No, not yet. Yeah, no. She'd probably just be embarrassed. I think, I think when people say to her, is your dad Keith Lemon? She goes, no. <laughs> <laughs> and my youngest goes, yeah. <laughs> well, I think you're one of the biggest in excess fans like myself out there, and uh, we would love you to help us get in excess into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame just by being on the show. So, thank you for that. No worries, it's been a pleasure. It's nice to speak to all the in excess fans. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah <it laughs> love is. to get you on, ag- on again because the- I know that they would love to hear more from you. Um, yeah, well, thank you very much. No worries, have a lovely day. And um, and some other words. <laughs> <laughs>